Video games are a massive part of a lot of people's lives. Even before the creation of home consoles, arcades were a popular way to enjoy yourself in your free time. Video games are also just a lot more mainstream as a whole nowadays too. And that's not me trying to say that games weren't popular a few decades ago either. The PlayStation 1 sold over 100 million units and is one of the most recognizable things just ever. What I mean is that there was a certain group that are most associated with gaming. Virgin. I joke, I joke. Most people in both my IRL and digital social circle know what a PlayStation is. Those same people have probably played at least one of these games before too. I believe this is because of just how many groups games can reach. People who like horror, people who like building things, people who like killing things, comfy games, wherever you'd classify Subway Surfers at. Games that make you question your entire life once you've finished playing and it causes you a sea of depression that you still have to deal with to this day. Or my favorite type of game, the bad Pixar games. Creating an indie game has also become a lot more viable with hosts like Steam. Before indie developers had to worry about promotion, what retailers would actually sell their games, startup money, it's all very complicated and difficult. But now with the internet being as mainstream as it is, an indie game can receive an incredible amount of attention from a single post, like a viral tweet or a let's player showing off the game. And there is no better example of this than... And also FNAF. Both of these games, I believe, showed that it was very viable to be an indie dev, as both Scott Cawthon and Toby Fox have made millions from their franchises. They are also bigger than a lot of AAA games too. Like, Undertale is in Smash. That, that says enough. With the success of these two games, this inspired people to really pursue game development as a full-time job. And we ended up receiving some of the greatest games I've ever played. Omori, for example, might be one of my favorite games of all time, and Undertale literally is my favorite game ever. But you didn't think everyone would be good, right? For every one good indie game, there are at least four really, really, really bad ones. But today that isn't the topic of this video. He did make a really bad game though. Yandere Dev to me is infinitely more interesting than his barely functioning game. A cautionary tale on hate and ego brought to its limits as this game Yandere Simulator takes longer and longer to release. Yandere Dev loses more and more of his fans who are eager for its release. And at the same time, Yandere Dev sinks deeper and deeper into a hole that alienates him from his audience. Will his game ever reach 60 FPS? Only time will tell. That's not a joke by the way, this game runs worse than a kid with no legs. Oh my god, would you look at that, it is the sub message for today because look at these numbers. I've been back on my content grind recently and I'd love to hit 100k subs, why am I talking like this? Look, I'd like to hit 100k before the end of the year or like start of 2024. Uh, you can help by subscribing and liking all the videos. If you want to interact with me on a semi-weekly basis, you can join the Discord or follow my Twitter or my Instagram. Uh, I also have a Ko-Fi because paying for mortgages, wow, <laughs> Jesus. Uh, but yeah, that's it, back to the video. Before there was ever a Yandere dev, or even a Yandere simulator, there was a small, innocent Alex. John 316. Or the name he was most known for online, Ava Zephan. Alex spent his teenage years being homeschooled, and as he would say on a forum post, Well, I always figured that my self-esteem came from somewhere else. Directly after elementary school, I was entered into an independent study program. It's a lot like homeschooling. I do all of my schoolwork at home, and once a week, I turn to work into a teacher at my program's local building. I never had a chance to experience junior high or high school, I never found out what the real world was really like. This is why, for the longest time, I believed that the world was no different than it was in elementary school or in the various forms of media that I enjoyed. Like to rent a girlfriend. By the time he was 20, he had already grown accustomed to spending most of his time at home and expressed difficulties in going outside to touch some grass. Something I also needed to do after reading everything about Alex. Semi frequent poster on 4chan and Skullgirls enthusiast. He got this infamous name from jamming the title of Evangelion and Ra Zavon. I'm gonna pretend we all like said that correctly together in multiple ways. Something that made up his early life was obsessively posting about things that upset him, no matter how small, such as him believing that anime, still can't pronounce it, was a copy of Ava due to similarities like both of them having their characters leave on trains. Something I have never seen in any other media before Ava and none since. During this whole thing, he would post a link to a gallery he made. 
get laughed at, and repeat. This obsession of proving Ra Zephan was an Ava ripoff culminated in him making a gallery of over 400 images where he tried his best to show everyone that he was right with damning evidence such as both shows having religious themes and references to the Bible, blood on hands, abandoned cities, military explosions, and not to the ground. <laughs> so stupid. Alex would even post this onto 4chan and got clowned on for it. This saga would end and people would start seeing Alex posting on the Gaia forums, where he might have posted one of the worst things he could have ever posted. These images would define Alex for literal years and are still frequently used to this very day. This wasn't a singular occurrence either. There's been multiple archives of Alex seeking validation about his appearance, and while I'm sure a lot of people would clown him for that, I do get it. I'm a little less sympathetic because he was a 20 year old at this point, but like, come on. But if someone is self-conscious and socially inept as him, I understand why he would do this. However, all of my empathy towards the dude is immediately shattered after finding out what his dream girl would be. I had a very different image of what girls are supposed to be painted in my head than what they actually are. I've always wanted a girlfriend who acted youthful, babyish, feminine, innocent, naive, childlike, pure, uncomplicated, unsophisticated, trusting, charming, polite, pleasant, sweet, lovable, cute, Cytheric, malleable. These qualities could be represented by anything from personality to cute speech patterns. It will. I've always wanted a girl who makes me want to hug her and protect her and nurture her. The Japanese actually have a word for this type of girl. It's a moe. Now, I usually don't care about people's tastes and partners, and mine steer towards the mentally ill, but babyish and childlike is where I personally raise an eyebrow. You serve no purpose in life. Anyway, I won't hold on to this for too long because Alex was already mocked relentlessly back then. So bad that Alex permanently rage quit the forum in 2007. It wasn't all bad though. Alex would graduate with a degree in 2D and 3D animation and could actually code games. This got him an internship for a company called Kung Fu Factory. While I'm sure this wasn't what Alex wants to do for the rest of his life, this was still a pretty good first job and could have been Alex's foot into the door in order to pursue bigger and better things. Unfortunately, this is not what happened. Alex would eventually get into live streaming and content creation. This is where clips like him raging at Skullgirls would come from. Skullgirls was a game Alex seemed rather passionate about, if this clip says anything. No, 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 no. So he took a shot at making his own 2D fighting game, and it looked really bad. However, for someone's first ever game that was programmed entirely by him, this is good. Like really good. Obviously things needed to be improved upon, but if Alex went into the right direction here, he could have made some stonks. Alex would join an IRC chat with the creator of Skullgirls, Mike Zen, and plugged his game. Something I want to point out is that Mike created one of the most polished fighting games I have ever played. The game has sold over a million copies and is still talked about to this day. Alex has been given a rare chance to talk to someone who has actually made it in the industry and get advice and criticism from him. And Alex fumbles the bag. Everyone hates my fighting game. It's the opposite of what I envisioned. I don't hate the game. I hate your attitude. I have done most of the work. There are just things you asked for that happen to not be implemented. Then you have not done most of the work because the things I'm asking for are basic building blocks of a fighting game. You don't seem to understand that part. How was it not impressive that I single-handedly created a fighting game? I made a game with intros, idols, walks, runs, jumps, dashes, air dashes, specials, health meters, super meters, throws, air throws and I hand animated every animation myself. Isn't that impressive? Isn't that respect worthy? So there's an organization problem. Can't I hear a single encouraging word? Like all I'm hearing is you suck at everything. I'd never hire you. I'd never work for you. No one has taken away your progress. The fact you got here is its own encouragement, your own validity, but you still have a ways to go. Nope, nothing has validity anymore. I started making a game because of Mike Z and then he personally shat on it. You see only flaws because you only saw poorly organized code written by an amateur programmer. If I showed you the final playable prototype and let you play it with a controller in your hands, I wonder how much different your feedback would have been. A big part of the motivation was that I wanted to make a cool game that might impress the predators, Mike Z and my buddies, Skullgirls chat and look at what happened. I'm glad this was archived because I really want to highlight a lot of the behavior Alex would have moving forward and how it would bite him in the ass later on. Well, I guess I'm glad that this happened sooner rather than later. Now I have a good reason to drop my game and stop working on it now rather than waste most of my time on it. I guess it was good that I finally learned that it was shit and I'm shit and that I'm a terrible programmer that no one should hire or work for. I don't think I need to explain why this mindset is horrible to have just in life, yet alone game development. Alex is notoriously bad at 
weren't taking any criticism. This IRC chat being a perfect example. Mike's criticism is not mean or bad. It's actually very helpful. Mike's criticism can be summed up as, this engine is unfinished and the code needs to be improved. Alex, for some reason, takes this as Mike telling him that his game is bad and that he'll never be successful in the industry instead of just taking his advice. It's very obvious that this problem Alex has will only get worse over time with him perceiving all criticism as an attack on his character and skill when most people just want him to improve. What's worse is that Alex will just lie about how this conversation of Mike went for some reason. Uh, only our heavenly father would know. I was inspired to become an indie dev by a very well-known programmer who almost single-handedly programmed a fighting game. He was my hero, my inspiration. I decided to try my hand at making a fighting game engine. I worked on it for three months and I was really proud of it. So I decided to show it to my hero. He was really unimpressed. He asked to see my code and criticized it very harshly. He told me that he would never want to hire me or even work for me. He told me that my engine was absolute garbage. He told me that with the level of coding experience that he had back in 1999, he could have made a better engine that I'd made. Prior to this experience, I was feeling very confident about my coding ability, but after meeting my hero and showing him my game, I just felt like some kind of talentless fraud. I felt like I just wasted the last three months. I started wondering if I should just abandon the game. Abandon my dreams of a career in the game industry. I wondered if I should even have faith in my own talent again. Worst of all, my hero said all of this in a chat room with my friends in it, making me look terrible in front of everyone. I lost the respect of my friends, my self-confidence, my career plans, three months of work, and my dream of making a fighting game all in one night. It was devastating. I became depressed. I turned my depression into a burning hatred that fuels my desire to develop indie games and eventually outshine that asshole. Oh wow, I'm sure this mindset is very healthy and won't have a long term consequence in the way Alex handles criticism. Oh, foreshadowing. The same thing would happen again where he took none of Mike's advice and then went on 4chan of all places for criticism. The main character is a girl in her late teens named Luna. Luna is obsessed with an idea. The idea that this world is full of people who don't deserve to live. Mer thieves, can human dealers, arms dealers, arms scam artists and identity thieves. Luna desperately wishes that she could do something to rid the planet of such people, but she feels like there is nothing she could do that would ever make a difference. Charlie in the back wondering why I just read a plot synopsis on Wattpad. I didn't. This is Alex's plot and it's edgy as hell. People on 4chan seem to have an issue with the character's design and Alex says this. Well, I've been using this design for the character for so long that I've got attached to it. I can change it since everyone hates it so much, but it's my vision of the character. Why even ask for criticism then? I, I don't get it. He stopped working on this game too and pitched another game in 2014. Hey, how's it going, bros? My name's <laughs> So I saw Mega Minx uh, playing this game and I'm like, yep, I need to check it out right now. Animu, so Animu. So it's 7 a.m. waking up in the morning, gotta be fresh, gotta go downstairs, gotta have my ball. Hey, might you look at my friends? Hey, it's my friends, how are you? Yes, we're friends. Yonder Simulator was a game that many big YouTubers were interested in. As shown previously, PewDiePie played the game, so there was a lot of attention aimed in Alex's direction. And here as well, I'll come out and say that Alex was not ready for this level of attention on him. The first few minutes of the video are incredibly important for painting the image of the person Alex was when he first started making Yonder Sim. One thing that Alex would become known for was banning a lot of people from his subreddits. People who were just giving the game criticism. This also isn't how Alex viewed this because he believed the only people he ever banned were those who brought up his past. I am sure there is no evidence that will disprove this later. Alex now had opened up a patron that would allow people to give him money for perks and so he could work on Yandere Simulator full time. I'm sure Alex assumed that this wouldn't ever take off or people wouldn't hold him up to his promises, which is why I think the next four years must have been hell for him. The first roadblock Alex would run into is someone making a mod that caused crashes and thus leading to false crash reports on his Discord server. I'm sure 90% of most game developers would be annoyed at most or completely apathetic towards an issue like that, but Alex went and programmed in a system to detect the mod's use and then lock players out of the game. <laughs> But why though? Imagine if Minecraft did this when mods crashed their game and they got emails about it. He was so upset by it that he went under a video's comment section to attack a person too. Emails seem to be a really major issue for Alex as he would make a 20 minute edited video about the whole thing. I'm sorry. I don't have any new gameplay features to show you today. 
you deserve to know the reason why. In order to tell you, I need to explain something first. I receive an extremely high volume of emails every day, between 50 and 100. Most of these emails are essential for the development of the game. I speak with 2D artists, 3D artists, animators, voice actors, musicians, sound designers, web designers, programmers, translators, bug testers, and more. I usually spend around six hours a day corresponding with volunteers to get the assets I need to continue developing Yandere Simulator. However, not every email that I receive is helpful. I receive a lot of bug reports from people who haven't read the list of bugs that I already know about. I receive a lot of questions from people who haven't checked the Frequently Asked Questions page. I receive a lot of emails from people who want to request or suggest features that I have no interest in including in the game. I receive a lot of emails from people who for some reason or another, can't get the game to run. I want to be a game developer who interacts with his audience. See, there's your problem right there. If the issue is that you're spending multiple hours talking of volunteers and the majority of your emails are essential for the game's development, then just ignore the small amount of emails that are be about stupid things. I literally have hundreds of emails sent to my business account that I ignore on purpose, yet alone the hundreds asking me random things. I do want to point out that this does show Alex's naivete with dealing with being a public figure and not something people really should hold against him. Spending an hour or two just responding to your fan base might be managed at first, but it can really become taxing. Now that I've finished explaining how much time I spend on Yandere Simulator, I can explain why you're staring at a picture of Yandere Chan kneeling rather than staring at awesome gameplay. It was very difficult to get any work done over the past two weeks. Two days were spent at Anime Expo, and two days were spent traveling in and out of Los Angeles. Nine days were spent answering emails, leaving me with one day to make this video. No, this is a really easy situation to fix, actually. Just stop responding to emails, and yes, before I said people shouldn't hold this against him, but Alex spending nine whole days responding to just emails is incredibly stupid. In those nine days, you could have started working out, played a lot of games, or I don't know, programmed your game. And I know Alex said some of those emails are essential for game development, but I can't imagine a world where you somehow spent six hours talking to volunteers. About what? You weren't even developing the game. I'm so confused. His excuse later is that he was hiring volunteers, which is helpful. But once again, you have to manage your time better. My first thought is hire a secretary or something, and Alex is kind enough to give a response to that. Yandere dev, yandere dev. Why don't you just hire a secretary to filter your emails and answer questions for you? Uh, well, uh, first of all, uh, thanks for the suggestion. But actually, I have some problems with that idea. I don't want to hire a secretary to help me with email because I don't want to babysit a secretary for several weeks until they have enough experience to do their job without supervision. I don't want to risk the secretary responding to questions incorrectly and spreading misinformation. I don't want to risk the secretary filtering my emails incorrectly and failing to send me important emails. I don't want to risk the secretary being lazy and going through emails so slowly that I'm better off doing it myself. And I don't want to risk the secretary seeing spoilers or other confidential information and then talking about it on social media. Wow, look at all of those problems are various in solutions. Just hire a secretary with experience and all of these are basically solved. A single conversation where you tell them to not respond to emails that can be found on the FAQ's pages fixes the biggest issue you have. It's better than you spending nine days responding to emails by yourself, mate. Now, has someone ever complained about something or told you not to do something and your thought was, I'ma do it? That is exactly what would happen by posting a video like this. Posting two videos like this would make the problem doubly worse, actually. Thankfully, 
delete these videos are now both gone. We're now two years into the game's development, and aside from some drama with Twitch, Alex has already managed to partner with a pretty well-known company, and also an indie dev's wet dream. They've been involved in some popular games, and had recently partnered with Alex. They sent him a whole person to code his game and fix his not-so-stellar programming. Alex still had a lot of features he needed to add, bugs he needed to fix, and also work on optimization of the game. A tiny build coder coming out to help him out with all of these was the best things that could ever happen to Alex. But of course, this is still Alex we're talking about. Some of these things Alex had on his to-do list are essential for game development. He was two years into the game's development as in missing the core building blocks of any game. Something Mike told him like five years ago at this point. A perfect way to visualize this is building a bridge with terrible foundation and just hoping it works. For some reason, Alex cut ties with Tiny Build, citing creative differences, which is annoying but understandable. Uh, unfortunately, his emails between the company were leaked and revealed how Alex conducted himself behind the scenes. Firstly, Tiny Bull tried to sue Alex for $31,000, and Alex sends back a wall of text that I wouldn't even make Rick Nays read. TLDR, Alex says he was in a dark place when he signed with Tiny Build, and one of the primary reasons he even signed with them was so he could get Yandere Simulator unbanned from Twitch. He also claimed that the coder they sent made the code unreadable, and if he was going to be charged $31,000 for terminating their contract, he would tell his audience of 2 million to never work with Tiny Build ever again. Of course, Tiny Build couldn't afford to have to deal with that PR nightmare and back down. In just two years, Alex has done quite a bit, made a bunch of money that he pockets, worked with a well-known developer, broke from that same developer, and learnt the art of paying people in exposure. I'm joking, please pay your artists. It seemed that Alex would never be able to escape this void of drama he found himself in as he continued to dig himself a deeper and deeper hole. At this time, Alex had 43 volunteers working on his game, 5 programmers, 17 artists, and 26 models, all working on various parts of the game. Some of these volunteers were so important to game development that Alex would be lost without them. So you'd imagine that at least some form of payment would be a thing, right? Uh, 5k per month is nowhere near the amount of money required to finance a team of professionals to work on a full-time game. The patron isn't the game's budget, it's my personal salary. It's like a big tip jar. With that said, I sometimes use the Patreon money to compensate volunteers for their help. This is rare, because most volunteers only contribute one or two assets per month, and aren't contributing a volume of work that deserves a salary. 5k a month is a lot to be making, and while Alex is right that this isn't enough to fund a team, he he should still be paying the people who are making creating the game easier something. Worse yet, he doesn't even credit the volunteers who work on his game. He would continue to run into issues of credit as he would be caught using multiple assets he didn't own. In fact, nearly all of Yansim is built on bought packs. There was also the issue of Alex adding the most useless features to his game that just made it more bloated while still lacking core features. Like the 10 rivals Yandere Chan needs to kill in order to be with her senpai. You know, the main goal of the game? Just wasn't implemented for the first four years of its development, because that's normal. Like, I really don't know what people were doing before Osana got added, and even then, she was piss easy to beat. Mm -mm. I'm not going to open that can of worms, because I'll never stop. Anyway, all of this built up, and Alex created the worst video I've ever had to watch for research purposes, and that's saying something, because I've had to watch some pretty bad videos. This video lives in infamy as hate and shame, the product of Alex managing to piss off a lot of his paying fans. This started with some drama on his blog as he delayed Osana's release four separate times. His fans being mad over it, him strawmanning the people mad at him, and when that doesn't work, he then releases the video, and judging by these Patreon numbers, it didn't have the intended result. Firstly, I want to talk about the portrayal of people in this video. Alex, the straight male, portrays himself as a scared anime girl, and people pointing out his bad behavior in the past as literal gremlins. Do not get me wrong, some people do the most, but that doesn't make up everyone interested in your past. Like, I'm not a gremlin, I, I hope. Anytime you ever say anything, no matter how harmless, they will interpret what you've said in the most negative manner possible. They'll even stretch the truth as far as they possibly can so they can continue believing that you are the monster they want you to be. This, as far as I've seen, isn't even what happens. Most of your critics at large just kind of think that you're A, being an ass, and B, being lazy. Let's say that you announce that you're gonna stop eating junk food, but in a selfie that you posted to Twitter, there's a candy wrapper in the background. They'll conclude that you've been eating candy, 
but if they simply spoke to you, they'd learn that you frequently have guests over at your house, and that you keep some snacks around in case your guests get hungry. Everything they believe about you could be debunked if they simply spoke to you and asked for an explanation. But they have no interest in doing that. They only want to believe whatever allows them to continue talking trash about you. No matter what your profession is, they will convince themselves that you're bad at it. If you're an artist, they'll claim that you're bad at painting. If you're a chef, they'll claim that you're bad at cooking. And if you're a programmer, they'll claim that you're bad at writing code. This is in reference to Alex barely working on his game, and the thing is, they aren't wrong. Alex at the time was spending hours every day streaming, not him programming, but just random games he's interested in. And I don't think that's a problem. My problem comes in the fact that Alex says he spends 12 hours a day working on the game, spends 4 hours every day streaming, 6 answering emails, and gets nothing done development-wise. This is in combination with the fact that he has a team of unpaid amateurs working under him, and he isn't even utilizing it properly. But no, apparently I'm wrong as him playing games counts as him working on Yandere Simulator? Every single day, from the moment I wake up to the moment I go to sleep, is filled with Yandere Simulator. Because even when I am playing video games, like a normal person enjoying leisure activities after his weekday ends, people are asking me questions about Yandere Simulator, and I am answering. It's like a non-stop Q&A session. There is literally not a single hour of my day that is not affected by Yandere Simulator. Please stop pretending that I am some shady guy who lies all the time. You're just being anal about the exact way that I phrase something and then saying, Aha, I got you, I caught you lying. It's ridiculously stupid. There is even a part where Alex just throws everyone who says anything negative about him into a blender and claims that they are gremlins and they're not critics. <coughs> Can you die somewhere else? Because they aren't criticizing an honest interpretation of him. Huh? <laughs> we can't call them trolls because many of them aren't interested in provoking you directly. We can't call them liars because they actually believe all of the ridiculous things they say about you. And when they try to paint a twisted picture of you using cherry-picked information and out-of-context screenshots, they are technically using words you've actually said. And we can't call them critics, because they aren't judging you, they are judging a twisted image of you that only exists inside their imaginations. So, what do we call them? Wow, when you put it like that, I now understand that you are a hard-working and amazing game developer who could do no wrong. Thank you, Yandere Dev. Congratulations! If you are treated like garbage for an extended period of time, it's going to affect your mood. You're going to become stressed out. You're going to become frustrated. You're going to become depressed. Over time, your original personality will melt away and be replaced with an angry and bitter attitude. Anger will cloud your judgment. Sometimes you'll be rude to people. Sometimes you'll lose your temper. Sometimes you'll get caught up in drama. You might find yourself saying nasty things that normally you would never say. This will make the gremlins very happy, because it provides them with new material to gossip about, and it convinces them that their beliefs are valid. It's ironic, because if it wasn't for their constant harassment, your mental health never would have deteriorated in the first place. I can agree with him partially here because having millions of people know who you are would stress me to hell too. But that doesn't apply to Alex here. Before Yandere Sim was even a thing, he acted the same way towards people. Even when Yandere Sim just started getting attention, Alex was being a dick to people for no reason. Like, Alex genuinely believes that any and all criticism he is receiving is this bad faithed gremlins POV of the truth. When in reality, people are getting pissed with the lack of updates on the game you apparently spent 12 hours working on. People were pissed that you went and spent $3,000 on a subreddit because your fragile ego couldn't handle any criticism. Like, 3k on a subreddit, my guy? What? Why? I usually couldn't give a toss about how people want to spend money. However, this is one of the exceptions. You could have used that 3k to actually pay your volunteers, put it into your savings or something, not buy a subreddit, you brainlet. So you interact with your fans all the time to get their feedback. You have thousands of interactions, and most of them are pleasant. But maybe 1% of them are negative. The gremlins could compile a collage of just the times when you had negative interactions and try to depict you as someone who can't take criticism. If enough people are tricked into believing this gremlin propaganda, 
people will stop providing you with feedback and criticism, and your project will suffer. This is just one of the many ways the gremlins can indirectly sabotage your project, even if they never speak to you directly. Tabloid magazines are small newspapers filled with gossip about celebrities. The stories in tabloid magazines are often false, and the headlines are designed to be as sensational and outrageous as possible in order to grab people's interest. It's like clickbait from before the internet existed. Celebrities usually ignore tabloids and don't bother to respond to the ridiculous claims inside of them. Tabloids are widely considered to be trashy entertainment for a low-brow audience. Unfortunately, there is a YouTube equivalent of tabloid magazines, channels that are dedicated to ridiculing and shaming other people. These YouTubers make money by degrading, debasing, and defaming others. Eventually, these YouTubers will hear what the gremlins are saying about you, and then they will start making videos about you. It doesn't benefit them to portray you with accuracy and honesty. It benefits them to exaggerate your flaws and depict you as a cartoonish caricature of who you really are, because that would be more entertaining and will result in more clicks and views, maximizing their ad revenue. If they really were interested in telling the truth, then they would contact you directly and ask you for your side of the story. However, none of them will ever do this. Like, I'm not even paraphrasing or exaggerating. To Alex, no criticism is valid, and him being an ass to people doesn't count, because he's usually very polite. Any YouTuber who has ever spoken about him are also just terrible people who are the equivalent to tabloid news articles. He'd go as far as to say that he never portrayed his critics in a negative light, and only did so to the people who dox and threaten him. But Alex, I am looking at you doing that right here. What is this? They grasp at straws and stretch the truth to depict me as something I'm not. They allow themselves to be tricked by impersonators. They judge me for things I said over a decade ago. They take my statements out of context. They make up outlandish theories and pretend that their theories are facts. Half the time, they don't even know what they're talking about, and they just make stuff up. Okay, how about we start with being honest and actually looking at the reason people were abandoning this game. I've been showing Alex's Patreon stats throughout this video as a way to visualize audience interest and Alex's favorability amongst his fanbase. This, unsurprisingly, is when Alex's Patreon began to hit an all-time low. Instead of coming to the conclusion that this was happening due to a lack of real updates and Alex being an asshole, he paints any and all of the people who view him in a negative light as gremlins who have it out for him. I have never seen such a manipulative video before. Scratch that. This video is still really terrible though. Even more surprisingly, his fans didn't like being manipulated and this only caused Alex more drama. So much drama in fact that he bought the official Yandere Simulator subreddit for $3,000. Rewind the video a few minutes to see why that's stupid. His new post as owner started with this. Is criticism of Yandere Simulator allowed? Criticism of the game has always been and always will be allowed. But just like in 99% of other subreddits, insults are not allowed and civil behavior is mandatory. Is criticism of Yandere Dev allowed? Email me directly if you have a personal criticism for me. If you post criticism publicly, it's evidence that your goal is to create a public spectacle. If you send criticism privately, it's proof that your goal is to genuinely provide helpful feedback. If your intentions are pure, then you should have no problem speaking to me directly. Thank you for your time. This started my personal favor of Alex's history because I find the suffering of others hilarious. <laughs> I, Eva X, humbly submit a toast. The Yandere Simulator Discord server. <laughs> so, people decided to run speedruns in order to get banned as quickly as possible. This is one of the many images they would post in order to get a rise out of Alex. People were also constantly bugging him in DMs until he would get very, very mad. Productive in your life. You're not doing anything productive in society. You are a worthless black spook in America. And the highlight of this are two events. Firstly, the world record for the ages was crafted after someone managed to get a sub one second ban on the Yandere Simulator Discord server. Time to get me banned really fast. All right, so it started. And I got, did I just get banned? Wait, 
There's no way. This is the peak of excellence, and I too want to reach this level of speed. Even the creator of the speedrun was baffled by the speed in which they were banned. Just <laughs> magnificent. Someone also managed to hack into Alex's Reddit account and unban everyone he's ever banned, causing the subreddit to be filled with the cum chalice image for the entire day. This is going to be the part where I say that this was way too much when it comes to trolling someone. This was only going to fuel Alex's view that anyone who doesn't like him were gremlins. And to be honest here, I am on his side when he says he couldn't work on the game. I would be crushed by this level of harassment. And yeah, I do respect Alex's ability to keep going despite this. Unfortunately, Unfortunately, something even worse than the Discord and Reddit harassment would come. Something Alex has not faced in the first six years of his game's development. Competition. A major issue of the Andre Simulator game was that it ran like ass, Straight cheeks. 60 FPS was considered the standing for gaming in 2020. The Simulator can't even do that in 2023. So when a new developer came out with his own type of Yandere game called Lovesick that could actually run at 60 FPS, Alex was mortified. Lovesick was a game that was also drenched in controversy due to the creator of the game being a terrible person and the also creating the game out of pure spite. Just like like Alex did with Mike all those years ago. A major selling point is that the developer made an engine that could compete with Yandere Sim in just two weeks. This was a lie, by the way. Why don't you back it up with a source? My source is that I made it the fuck up. Anyway, with updates happening frequently and more attention going towards Lovesick instead of Yandere Simulator, Alex had two options. Attempt to compete with the new dev team or fold into second place in this market. This sounds so ridiculous. Oh my God. An example I want to use is WWE and AEW. AEW, in my opinion, made WWE start to actually have to try and maintain their top spot. Competition stops complacency, which is always good. However, Alex did not see it this way. I'm not sure if you're going to care, but I really want to express something to you. My life has become an absolute hell since you announced your project. Many of my friends have abandoned me. I have received dozens of messages per hour from people saying, haha, there is no reason to support you anymore. And the amount of harassment I receive per day has tripled. Your apology video didn't resolve the problem. Tens of thousands of people are still spreading the narrative that it's possible to recreate all my work within two days. Every day is a nightmare now. Nothing but non-stop abuse and harassment. I just want to work on a cool anime girl game project in peace. And now there is nothing but suffering and misery. I can't have a peaceful life anymore. And it's because the existence of lovesick convinces people that they are justified in treating me like garbage. What hurts more than anything is that lovesick is a name I announced I was going to use. And now I can't even use the name anymore because it's associated with all of this pain and harassment. Everything I built has been stolen from me and destroyed. And nobody realizes or cares. And it's all because they've been misled into believing things things aren't true. The actual drama started a while ago, but I don't feel like talking about that. If you are aware that your project is having so many destructive consequences on another person's life, how can you possibly continue? Don't you see how harmful and damaging this is for me? If the cost of Yandere Simulator was ending a person's life, I'd cancel development. So in short, you're asking me to go up to my entire community and say, hey guys, my game was fake the entire time? My coding's bad and I'm starting from scratch because the game is trash in general. Sorry, you can leave the fan base now. Yes, because that's my understanding of the situation and it would be nothing short of honesty and transparency to admit that to your audience. Ignoring the irony of Alex, the king of spaghetti goods saying someone's code is bad, these two screenshots caused even more people to see Yandere Dev as a lying, dishonest, guilt-tripping piece of shit. But this was shortly ignored as the creator of Lovesick would be exposed for being a groomer and would cause Alex to stop trying again. Nice work, King. After seven years of development, Alex really didn't have much to show for himself, no matter how much he'd like to deny that. Back when Yandere Simulator was released in 2014, it was a pretty cool concept of a lot of potential. But now, post Undertale, Cuphead, Celeste, Deltarune, Ultra Kill, Amori, all of these indie games and many more I don't know about, Yandere Simulator just doesn't have a place anymore. This game has been in development for nearly a decade and part of me wondered how would Alex feel about this. Well, that thought was answered in a video released on May 11th. A video where Alex addressed his concerns and how it felt working on the game for so long. But that isn't the focus of this video, and as I've said before, I don't actually care that much about the game's development compared to its creator. 
I kind of just think that this game is bad and Alex constantly adding random crap no one asked for halted the game's development majorly. It's a game that has been using uni assets for its entire development. The code is atrocious. The game looks as bad as Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. It's just a bad game. I do honestly think that Alex had high hopes for Yandere Simulator. I'm sure he had big dreams on its development and that's great. But I do think he shouldn't have been thrusted into so many bright lights when he self-admittedly lived in isolation for a large majority of his teenage life. The most important part of Alex's development, he just wasn't ready to handle that negative online feedback that comes of being a famous person on the internet. It's why I do feel bad for him at points and why I do really sympathize with his struggles to finish the game. I do hope he finishes the game because we're shortly approaching 10 years of this game being in development and that's a big yikers moment. He's made thousands from this game and it would be so sucky if we never saw the full version or something like that I, again i don't really care thanks for watching the video i'll probably be vcing in myself on the 25th of September 2023, a user called Osa dropped a video accusing Alex of grooming a child. Alex was fast to flag the video, but there are multiple re-uploads. To a lot of people, this might have come out of nowhere, but something I was intentionally ignoring is the multiple times Alex has said questionable things about children throughout the years. The main reason I did this was because I didn't want to imply that Alex was a nonce without definitive proof. But this recent video, the thing people pointed out before was a massive post that didn't really have any evidence backing up. And as we know, a lack of Proof is hearsay in this household. Alex has always kind of been a creep, even before he became Yandere Dev. In this video alone, I've read of his description of his perfect girl, where he used words like babyish, which, yes, is an obvious red flag. This 100% comes from his anime viewpoint of the world. I'm pretty sure that's his main form of entertainment, and because of the fact that he's an actual incel, I'm not surprised that he has a preference for kids. He's went after kids before on forums. He also sold body pillows of his minor characters too, and I know what some of you in the comments are going to say. Oh, Oranges, Alex said that any and all of his characters in Yandere Sim are 18. And that would be a fair point if I gave a sh**. His characters wear middle school uniforms. Look at this dog. If I say it's a transformer, you can see that it is still a dog. That's obviously a middle schooler. So I don't like- What? Also the fact that one of his characters, who is in love with her brother by the way, is stated to be a year younger, meaning that she is 17 and a minor. But oh yeah, the, put the middle schoolers on body pillows. It's, it's fine. Also the sex person's comment, and I'm trying not to throw up after saying that. Alex just privately and publicly said that minors should take a test to see their sexual maturity. I, I know everyone watching already probably thinks that's really stupid. However, I think explaining why it is stupid from a logical perspective really hammers that home. Issue number one, people can cheat. That's it. One day in 2014, I received hate mail from someone who was offended by Yandere Simulator. It was actually the f very first time anyone had ever sent me hate mail about Yandere Sim. Because I felt attacked, I started arguing with the person who sent the hate mail. They said, your game is creepy because the characters are underage. I responded, the age of consent is different in every country. So does that mean that the game is only creepy in some countries? The reason I responded this way is because I wanted to feel like I was slapping them with a witty comeback. I wanted to be contrarian towards them purely for the sake of being contrarian. I was pursuing the sensation of a ha, gotcha moment. They must feel really stupid right now. To cope with the fact that I had received hate mail. I wanted to feel like I had defeated the person who sent me hate mail. This was a hill Alex chose to die on. I know he said he was in contrarian mode or whatever, but he had sat down and had to write the email checked the grammar and everything, and he didn't think this was a bad idea even once. Eventually, the conversation somehow turned to the topic of abolishing the age of consent. This was the first time in the conversation that I actually felt like we had arrived at an intellectually engaging subject. Some people mentally develop at different speeds than other people. This means that one age of consent doesn't work for everyone. For example, some people might be mentally developed enough to have sex at age 18, but other people might not be mentally developed enough to make that decision until age 19 or 20. For this reason, the concept of an age of consent is slightly flawed. It was an interesting hypothetical thought experiment, so I actually put a bit of thought into it. If the age of consent had to be replaced by something else, what would it be replaced with? Instead of selecting an arbitrary number to permit people to have sex, what else could you do? Well, it would be convenient if there was a machine you could place in your head that would scan your brain and determine your current level of mental development. If this machine was 100% accurate, then it would be able to objectively determine whether or not a person is ready for sex. The way I phrased this was really stupid. 
stupid. I said something like, what if there was a sex test and if you pass it, you get a sex license? Wouldn't that be better than having an age of consent? This was a stupid exclamation because it completely left out all of the nuance of why I was actually trying to say it. The person I was arguing with was mortified and asked, what if a 14 year old passed that test? Would you permit them to have sex? It was an invalid question because no 14 year old could possibly mentally develop fast enough to pass the brain scan test. It simply would never happen. But because I was in contrarian mode, I just wanted to contradict everything the person said. I simply responded, yeah, if the test is designed to prove something objectively true, then it must be objectively true, which had created a false narrative that I think 14 year olds should be able to have sex. I don't think this is being taken a different way. A sex license is a bad idea entirely because a person can just lie. An adult manipulating a child could literally tutor them and exploit a very broken system. You are weird. You're so weird. Regarding the stuff that happened literally yesterday when I'm writing this part, there is a recorded call where Alex said, and I quote, I don't sexualize minors, mother nature does. Mother nature sexualizes minors. Puberty starts to give breasts and wide hips to children before they turn 18. It's not like, you know, a person does it to a child. The child's own body does it to themselves. It's not like an adult can go to a child and cast a magic spell that gives them breasts. Ha ha, I've sexualized you. I gave you breasts. And the child is like, no. No, the child just does it. The, the child's body does it automatically. A child gr gradually becomes an adult over time because of puberty. Yeah, I, I get what you're doing. It. What does it sound silly when I freeze it? Yeah, it sounded really silly. But it's true, though. Alex also talks about his penis size with a 16 year old. No, no, I'm still not done. When he caught wind of these recorded calls, he went back to the minor, begging them to lie and say that it wasn't actually him who said this stuff. I'm going to delete Snapchat now. There is something I want you to do, but I know you probably won't do it. Hmm? Please say, I lied, none of it was real. I asked my friend to use a Yandere Dev AI voice changer. This is not actually his voice. Please don't actually release any video. The evidence is all fake. Like, it's always Snapchat with these niggas. Yeah, I know all about that, but my personal opinion doesn't matter. Whether or not I think it's immoral, it is still illegal for me to be having a romantic, like, sexual conversation of someone under 18. This was after Alex was talking about his penis size called a minor hot multiple times and also said that nature sexualizes minors. Please shoot me in the head. I don't want to be here anymore. And when the minor was calling him out, he dropped the same pathetic response he dropped of lovesick people. The same one he dropped in the hate and shame one and it really shows how little he's actually changed. I'm so lonely and miserable and depressed and unhappy. Of course, the one time a girl is actually nice to me, I got attached. I'm sorry. Nothing else compares. I'm really sorry. If you are genuinely sorry, you'd save me. You are the only hum human on earth who can and save me. Hang on, I just need to. I like to pretend that things were as cut as dry in this, but this is why I dropped my hot take and opinion about everything regarding the situation. To clarify, I want to say that this victim is a victim and I don't want to speak over them. Just looking at that last screenshot alone, I would be so guilty. I need to say this for legal reasons that I am now stating my opinion on a situation. I am not a fed or directly involved, but a lot of things they've done after this revealed was really distressing for me. Firstly, the victim is copyright striking videos of those chats because they believe they have the right to. But I feel like this is because of Alex's grip that he has on them. Alex told the person to go lie and say that none of this was real and they went and did it. Alex had helped the victim. Another issue I have is the, the recordings themselves as I think they originally did want to tell people about what Alex had done, but either got cold feet or were bullied into staying silent by Alex. Just looking at the screens that I've read, I feel like the latter is more what happened. The language used in this retraction matches similar retractions. And the fact that we know that victims have been threatened with legal action before really makes me believe that this is Alex talking through people just to get his core cool audience and commentary channels to back off. The only person who can even support this game are kids, kids who Alex wants to exploit. So regardless of how bad you think this video is, if you are a human being, let alone a child, please avoid Alex. Yes, I'm aware of his community posts where he's apologized and I know that Kali Mara and Harley have gone into like, you know, comparing the two, but I don't think that's necessary because just look at these messages messages. Please, you're the only one who can save me. If you don't do this, my life is going to be ruined. This is blatant manipulation. This is so obviously guilt tripping. There's not even an argument to be had here. My conclusion here was a lot different a single day ago when I originally finished the script. Yandere Dev, 
Alex is one of the biggest degenerates I have ever covered and it's very rare that I see someone so unfit to have internet fame. He hadn't gotten the necessary social interaction needed to exist in the real world. His opinion on women were stunted to say the least and he had no way of handling any negativity towards himself or his crappy game. I don't have any closing thoughts other than this man needs to get off the internet for good this time. He's a shit programmer, a shit person and a predator and I've had enough of him. Thanks for watching the video. After this video goes up, uh, I probably gonna be in vc so go check that out as i've said before my socials are linked in the description so if you want to check those out you can i really appreciate people who sit down to watch these videos but i'm especially gra grateful grateful the word is grateful i'm very grateful to you cup dev gurge the cat 67 crystal flim i like the shark anchi kiara king johnny th445 and Puep, sabin oliver Nekotro Official, Grizzly Bear 1996, Kinda Snowy, Club Seal, and Alien Hunter. I'll be heading out now so I can shower. Have a good day. See ya, lads. Open door,